other, I would call superfluous data. <laughs> In the background, you know, other folks. Um, it's the main scene in the picture is the confrontation between these two guys. Um, and that's basically it. All right. Thank you very much, Bonnie. Could we give her a little round of applause, please? Nice job. Uh, are there any other uh, comments that she might have left out that should be added? You, I, would, I would prefer you didn't add any, anything. Yes? All right, I'll add there's a, each, there, there's a marked uh, thing in, in the crowd that people that are sitting on the bus. Each one represents almost a racial group. There's a rabbi there, there's a woman, there's a Chinese, there's a, a, there's a working class, a, a laboring class. And this, this is noticeable in the group people. Well, well, that's good. I just went one little point. Uh, from each person, you're going back over. I know. <laughs> don't don't do that. Any other any other things that she might have left out that we should add? Yes. The bus is pack passing Dyke Street. Oh, great. All right. <laughs> any other uh, any other comments, or you feel like we've got given her enough? Uh, yes. One man sleeping, one man reading the paper. Sleeping and reading the paper. All right. Could we have uh, one more? Uh, <laughs> Lord's sake, that static will really cause a lot of confusion. How long would it take? Oh, sure. Okay. Could we ask the next person to come in? Uh, no, I'd like you to stand right here. Now, she's going to describe verbally everything that the second person told her, and then he's going. you're going to draw with the microphone uh, and chalk. You're going to speak into the microphone and draw a picture of what this picture really was. Okay? What she tell? What she tells. So she's going to tell you just what that picture was. Okay, there was a, a picture flashed on the screen, one picture. And it seemed to have been a public conveyance of some sort of a bus. Can you hear all right in the back? Okay. A bus, let's say. And there were people in the bus. And the picture was of the inside of this bus. And there were various people around sitting down. How are they sitting? Uh, uh, in, uh, in a ramp? Yeah. Are they sitting uh, uh, like in a bus? Uh, uh, bus. Uh, that's very good. And, and, uh, and it's, you know, it's interesting because this group insists on doing it. But, and most groups don't. We, I, I can't allow you to ask questions because oh, okay. it'll enhance communications. And remember that when you're giving an order to somebody, don't let them ask any questions because the chances are they won't understand it if you don't allow them to ask questions. And I don't allow gestures oh, because they clarify. I can't talk. They clarify uh, just uh, too much, and I, and I don't want that. Okay. okay. All right. Go right in. Okay, we're in a bus and we got people around. There's pe there are two rows of seats, and there are people sitting in these seats. And in the in the aisle, in the, between the two seats, there are two gentlemen standing. One is a businessman, or appears to be a businessman, and he is as a black man. The man confronting him, or it seems to be confronting him, is a blue collar worker, and he is a, a white. And there seems to be some kind of uh, consultation of some sort. The blue-collar worker has a razor in his hand, and they seem to be having a. I can't ask questions. <laughs> so seem, they seem to be having some kind of argument. And in the bus, the people seated are represent various uh, minority groups, or the various uh, like a rabbi, a. Uh, the various ethnic and religious groups. And they, this, you can see a street sign as this bus passes, and it's Dykeman Street. That's all. Dykeman Street. That's very good. Thank you. Could we give her a nice round of applause, please? Yes. Uh oh. Got a problem here. Let me move the board over to you. Service. Okay. There you are. I'm not very artistic. Well, no. It, just stick me in and just a very rough okay. idea. First thing we're, uh, gee, you know, you people scare me. <laughs> we're on a bus. We're on a public conveyance, you know, and it's inside of a bus. So I'm going to draw an inside of a bus. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's bad when you're not an artist. I could explain it better than I can draw it. Uh, 
and in this bus we have uh, all types of people sitting around in seats, and there are different minority groups, and there are two people standing in the aisle. And, uh, and of course, these are all seats on the inside the bus. Very artistic. <laughs> One man is a black man, and he, you know, I've kind of lost it. <laughs> he seemed, he is having an altercation with the other gentleman who is a supposedly a blue collar worker, and he's a white man, and the blue collar worker has a razor in his hand. All the other people in the bus are all sorts of different minority groups black, Chicanos, uh, Oriental, etc. And we passed the street, and I forget the name of the street. This is all the thing I got out of it. All right. Thank you very much. Nice round of applause, please. If we uh, show that uh, picture back up on the screen. Yes, I think the picture uh, will be a sort of a revelation to those that didn't get to see it originally. Could you move it over just a... That's good. And, uh, yeah. Well, listen, maybe that'll suffice if that will be of help. Let me explain what we've got here. Uh, first of all, you did hear some communication breakdowns. You did hear some loss of information as it went from person to person. Well, let me tell you the background of this slide, and it'll make a little more sense to you, I think. First of all, this slide is put out by B'nai B'rith, which is a, an organization that's designed to uh, sort of uh, be, make people aware of subliminal stereotyping. And when I say subliminal stereotyping, I mean that there are certain stereotypes that we carry around in our minds that are inevitable. And I don't care who you are or what you are, you carry them in your minds. And sometimes it's called a, a prejudice or a bias, but it's in your minds and it's almost inevitable, but if you're aware of it, then you can, uh, you can, you're, uh, you can control it and, uh, and r rationalize it a little better. Let me explain, although it didn't happen in this group, and I, and I commend this group for that uh, purpose, in 80% uh, of the talks I've given, and I've given this talk over 250 times, in 80% of the talks, especially with older groups, I'd say 40 years and up, 45 and up now, and I've given this talk over a 10-year period of time, so I've seen quite a change in, uh, in the re, uh, re reactions of the audiences. The black man, as it goes from person to person, this uh, slide is called Rumor Clinic, by the way, and rumors are always going around aboard ship and aboard station, no question about that. The black man inevitably, again with older groups, changes from the business clothes to the work clothes. The razor inevitably switches over to the black man. Now, that's because when people communicate, they communicate and they leave holes in their communication so there are mis it leaves room for interpretation and misunderstanding. And now, you know, I, it might appear that I've talked all, to all uh, uh, Caucasian audiences. That's not true. I've talked to all black audiences and I've talked to all kinds of mixtures of audiences. And in, this happens in all groups and it happened in the black group as well. The same stereotypes are carried there as well. You have a question. Yeah. Uh, well, yes. I'd just like to point out, the last, the last statement that was made was that the black man is having a confrontation. That was a, that was a sentence I copied down verbatim. You mean from, uh, from, the, the, from the final description oh, I of the see. scene. Yeah. The black man is having a confrontation, and there was no ascription of race to role. Prior to that, it was, it was communicated as the clearly defined and then the blue yeah. collar worker in the last scene it was the it was the white and the black and the black was having the confrontation well it's it, it, that's interesting on the verbiage but it it isn't near as significant as what's happened in most groups that I've talked to because inevitably it changes and by the way these are uh, stereotypes that we carry in our minds of different ethnic groups inevitably if you get into detail this is a uh, fat chinaman sitting here it goes from, and that could be anybody that's a heavy set. It doesn't necessarily have to be an ethnic person. Uh, I've given this talk in Utah, and what's the group up there that wears the hats and drives?